So boy oh. stopped and got some haircuts. This isn't even a haircut. <laughs> How you doing over there, buddy? <laughs> Not cutting my hair. <laughs> We haven't had any haircut. So, our mate. Mate, mate, I'll be back. I hope you get a good haircut. <laughs> Fuck, are you serious? I don't know if my mum's gonna attack me or something. I don't know. You haven't been? Just pick his fingers up my nose. Yo, if you start slapping my face, I'm gonna beat your ass. <laughs> Yo, if he was gonna slap me in the face, I'm just waiting for it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, he cracked. I didn't like, know you could do that I'm, shit. Yeah. Is that my cartilage? It's just broke. I think it's your cartilage. <laughs> it's fucked up. <laughs> oh, what is happening? <laughs> oh. Fuck, I've never experienced no shit like this. <laughs> it just keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bro, my whole head, my brain. This cunt has his finger in his ear. I swear. Yo. <laughs> oh my god, this is fucked. I have no idea what is going on. I've never experienced nothing like this shit. <laughs> So you see my red dot? I can see your red dot. It's not <laughs> ideal to be bleeding at the barber shop, but when in India. Bro, <laughs> 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 this is so hectic. <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> my brain's about to fall out of my ear. <laughs> I can't fucking breathe. <laughs> oh my god. Not sure what the purpose of this is. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> oh, what is going on, India? <laughs> I, yeah, yeah, I'm free, yeah. we say biryani. <laughs> One, two, three, biryani! What the f-
fuck is going on, India? <laughs> Mate, you know as much as me. <laughs> oh my god, bro. Get fucked. <laughs> Literally just done. Oh! Just done a snake call out on a motorbike. <laughs> Apparently, this is how you do it. Where are we? Oh, we're home. We are home. We are home. This is fucking wild. Alright, guys. Just got a snake call. Let's go. All right, guys. Cobra over here. I see it.
What are you getting? Another bag. Yeah. Just rescued a snake out of this university with Ricky. Look how many people over there. Two, Two snakes. <laughs> <laughs> this is sick, man. This is the man right here. The snake saver. Ah, yeah. What else is in here? I don't know. There we go. Should we just take him to let go anyway? Good. Uh, How it changed the level? people's biggest nightmares are crawling in a tight space and being infested with snakes. Here you got a little bit of both. Look at this. I've got to go in there and catch all these things so me and Rick can release them. Let's go. To get the party started, get just a few. <laughs> this thing's crawling on the camera. Bro, look at this. Oh my god. Holy. Oh, they're getting everywhere, huh? That's all right, that's all right, that's all right. 
There's more. Let's go. Yeah, real tight in this place. We're not ready for more yet, Mike. All right. But I got more though. Spaces, snakes everywhere, eggs. Oh man. This is the last three. Last three? Yeah. Oh. There you go. Alright, guys, we are all empty in here. Uh, I'm going to give you guys a couple of eggs for good luck. Holy boy, that is... Mate. Mate. And a lot of snakes. I've never, ever dealt with so many snakes. <laughs> How's that for a Indian rock python? Look at that head. I'm sorry, buddy. It's crazy looking, huh? Why don't you start pooping? This area is uh, all our uh, forest area. Wow. It's some forest. <laughs> <laughs> Look how many snakes this is. Oh my god. This is a lot. Got a freaking bear hook snake. And they're just going everywhere. Oh my god. This is a release. Um, this is not even half the snakes we have to get out of here. Everywhere. Oh my goodness. This is sick. 
blue, but it's all right. We're free. <laughs> oh man, that makes me so happy. That's just three bags. We have 10 more to go. <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> There's snakes everywhere. Oh my God. This is too many snakes to deal with. Roll. Mate, check out all of these snakes. These are Indian rat snakes. And these are literally just a quarter, not even a quarter of the amount that have been caught in the last week. We're just out here releasing them all. That's as many as I can hold in one frame. We have about 50 of them that we're letting go back in the bush, out of the village, out of arm's way. <laughs> Mate. No, There's no, a crazy no. amount of snakes in India. That is no. hectic. All right, guys. We are here, Afton, in India. You guys saw that rock python we, we had caught. Now we're going to relocate it. You guys check out the scenery over there. This is ideal habitat for this animal. Not in someone's backyard. Now he's a little grumpy fellow, so I'm sure he'll uh, say hello fairly quickly. Not a bad looking snake. But I don't want to get him all pissy again. I'm just gonna let him go. Look at that man. Closely related to the Burmese python. It's your Indian rock python. This guy is easily about a good eight foot. This is about almost max size for him. You can find him all the way up to Pakistan, down to Sri Lanka. Indian rock python. More lightly colored than the berm, much smaller. He got that peachy head. Look, he's gonna bite him for sure. <laughs> or not. It's fine. So we're gonna let this little guy go over here in this little patch of grass and wish him well. What a snake. Not typically found in a pet trade. So I'm no stranger to berms, but definitely a stranger to these guys. Sick, huh? Let's go. Righto, we're out here. We got another release, relocation. This is a scary one. This is a Russell's Viper. I don't know if you can hear that thing. I've never heard a sound like that coming out of a snake in my life. These things, if I can get this lid undone. If I'm not mistaken, are responsible for the most deaths out of any snake in the world. These snakes literally kill more people than any other snake in the world. While they're not, while they're not the most toxic, 
not even in the top 20 most venomous snakes in the world. They have a powerful mix of cyto and hematoxins, which literally just melt your skin. So when you get bitten by these snakes, they literally just rot you, you just get gangrene. The venom just melts your skin. And out here in countries where you don't have access to good healthcare, you end up just dying from, I don't know, a plethora of hectic, Uh, infections. Holy. Now, I'm not in Australia. I'm not in my element in Australia. In Australia, I've caught all the native species. I know everything about the native species. I'm here in India. And everything here is new for me. We don't have access to exotic species. We don't have any vipers here in Australia or in Australia. So this is my first time playing with a snake of this caliber. Look how fucking insane those patterns are. I've never seen a snake like this. Holy dooly. These things are known to just jump lightning fast just rapid springs of their body, kind of like the death adder, and just launch up back over themselves and smash her. They have massive fangs, massive venom yields, and super, super toxic venom. Mate, this thing's actually acting a lot better than I was expecting. I was pretty fucking terrified of the thing making those sounds in the tub. I've never heard anything like it coming from a snake. You can see the tub behind us doesn't seem like the most textbook way for releases of snakes, but we're literally in the middle of India. This is just how it's done here. What an absolutely fucking insane snake. I'm gonna release this guy in this part of their in this part of their habitat, or this part of their distribution, they favour drier, rocky sort of country, which is exactly where we are. And this guy come out of the local village, so we're gonna we're gonna let him go. Jesus Christ! Right, <laughs> we're out here. We're in like central southern India. And we're doing a release <laughs> giant spectacled cobras. Holy fuck, <laughs> look at these snakes. This is crazy. I pretty much had very limited experience working with cobras. We're out here with a local snake catchers, one of the most well-known snake catchers in India, as, as far the snake saver. And these are snakes that he's have relocated from the village over the last week. Absolutely crazy. He was saying last night that over 50,000 people die from snake bites in India every year. While these snakes aren't the most toxic out of snakes in the world, they, people just don't have access to the right sort of healthcare. Have a look at that. Absolutely fucking insane. <laughs> this is wild. Look at these snakes. Mate. This is some very cool stuff.
one of my dreams is to come out to India and work with all their snakes, all their wildlife. And man, as you guys know, my big, huge back tattoo is a spectacle cobra. Oh, and this guy is not happy. I'm smelling him, what is that? <laughs> oh, oh, fuck. I'm trying to release these guys and they're just chewing on each other. What are you doing, bub? Just doing a little cobra release, mate. Are uh, you alright? <laughs> it's fucking so cool. Freedom at its finest, huh? It's definitely something different. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, What are the tattoos you wear? Yeah, yeah this is the thing. Oh, this, oh. Thing. Oh. Then, this is a torture. turtle. Yeah, turtle. Turtle. Next. Fish. Fish. Shark. Shark? Yeah. Oh my god. Oh, yeah. stay good. No, no, just take it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Sample. Nice. Okay, fine. <laughs> sit, sit. Complex. <laughs> How are you feeling, champ? Feeling better, man. Feeling better. My boy almost fucking kicked the bucket last night. <laughs> oh, yeah. I was worried, man. Bro, I was worried. But you're coming back. We're getting there. It's like 50% now, 60%? 50. 50. <laughs> Brother, you were on 3% earlier. I was on 1%. Fuck, bro. Scary. It's gonna die on us, guys. Fuck. Fuck. Three, 
Like this, like this. <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah, I understand. Like I was also crazy like watching a big cobra was handling from you. Yeah. Mm. He's out the bag. Oh, you, oh, watch your feet, watch your feet, mm. watch your feet. Yeah. Yeah. I was gonna throw this guy in the bush. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got you. Alright, back up. Get behind us. Behind, behind. Just watch that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so Alright. Right, we're just letting go. The last of the snakes. These are all Egyptian cobras. They're not Egyptian. We are not in Egypt, we're in India. I really have to be careful not to this many snakes here. Holy dooly. Have a look at that. Big Indian Cobra. Naja Naja. Get on the right way. On this side. You adjust him. Same way he was last night, he is this morning. He's feisty. He's wild. He hasn't been sitting for much long. And, uh, yes, this is about as big as they get. Uh, they get a little bit bigger. I don't know if you guys know, these guys lay eggs, uh, about 8 to 15, sometimes like 20 of them, but it's going to be a big snake. Um, depending on where they come from, from Pakistan to Sri Lanka, they have uh, hemotoxic. You don't want one of these things biting you. Um, as you guys know, hemotoxic destroys your flesh, neurotoxic destroys your nervous system. This is something that I've never heard coming from a snake before. This right here is a Russell Piper. And if I'm not mistaken, these are responsible for the most deaths out of any snake in the world. Um, I actually just got out of hospital yesterday, so this is sort of the last thing I need to be doing, but it was kind of a blessing in disguise because thanks to Mike, we got a few vials of his own blood <laughs> out of the IV drip. So we got some blood. We're gonna show exactly what this powerful hematoxic venom does to some human blood because when you get bitten by one of these things it literally just melts your flesh melts your muscle and it's not actually the venom toxicity that kills all these people it is the severe infections that they get from their flesh literally just rotting off their bones so I'm gonna pull this fella out I'm gonna pin him behind the head and I'm gonna milk some venom and then we're gonna release him Have a look at the patterns on this thing. Cool. So I'm gonna have to maybe go for the thicker end of the stick. <laughs> this is a strong snake. Holy dooly. Bruh. Mate, this is a fucking strong snake. He's just flexing and ripping himself out. I gotta be super careful here. I'm not, my body's not in the best condition. <laughs> I was pretty much on my deathbed fucking last night, so. Just gotta be fucking careful. Fuck. There we go. Righto. 
So the things, the thing with vipers is they have flexible fangs that they can move independently. And it makes them so dangerous to pin like this because, because they can literally stick their fingers down straight into your finger. Look at the size of the fangs on these. They are fucking enormous. That, that is a wild snake. Holy fucking dooly. Mate, this is off its head. I deal with the most venomous snakes in the world every day in Australia. And this thing's making me shake. All right, how I'm gonna do this. We got a little venom, little vial. I don't want this thing to like overbite and stick a fucking, stick a fang. Oh my God. Look at all that venom. Look at the size of the fangs in there. They have absolutely massive fangs. That's probably like, I don't know, 200 odd milligrams of crazy, crazy potent hematoxic venom there. This snake actually has double fangs. I don't know if we'll be able to see as we pop that off. Look, there's one fang and the other, the other fang's still stuck in there. Holy dooly. How's that? Russell's Viper, <laughs> middle of India. We're milking it with the real Tarzan's blood. <laughs> what is life? Mate, <laughs> have a look at the size of these fangs. They're still dripping venom after it just dumped like a serious, serious amount of venom in there. That is fucking insane. Righto, so I just took the cap off that. We've got a vial of human blood from yours truly, the real Tarzan, just donating it for the cause. I'll mix this with two vials. Something you only get in India. I tried to get a couple of vials of my own blood in Australia. No one would do it for me, so. Good thing we ended up in hospital. So there is Tarzan's blood mixed with the hematoxic Russell's Viper Venom. So we'll just leave that for like I don't know, a minute or so, and we'll see what it does. You can see the sort of consistency that it's at now. And we'll see exactly what it looks like in another minute from now. You can see already it's been like instantly that it's like just turning into jello. This is not, this has not been a minute. It's like turning into a giant worm. Oh, yeah, that's probably not a bad idea either. We can pour it out. Look at that. How weird that is. Turn that whole thing into jelly. And it's just going to keep, keep getting worse. Alright guys. I know a lot of you are always thinking what you want to think. Um, and you think these snakes are defanged or their mouth sewn shut or they're glued shut. Um, we are going to milk this spectacle cobra. I'm gonna make sure fully away and off the top here. He is up there. I got a stick in just in case, but it's all right. We will manage to this guy down. He is not happy at all.
Oi, 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 oi. Almost. <laughs> I'm good. Are you sure? Yeah. Let me touch his mouth. This guy is biting. milk this guy only a couple of drops in there you guys see it just dropping a couple of drops but man just that alone send you off to meet your maker now I haven't milked many snakes actually this is like my third milking I've ever done in my life so, uh, very, very close call, but it comes with the territory of working with these animals. You guys always think that these animals are not hot, they're not venomous, they're fake snakes. It's as real as it gets right there. Wow. Now, yesterday, I'm at the ER, and I got a couple of vials of my own blood, and, uh, we're gonna see what it looks like when this hits your veins. First, I'm gonna put this guy back. Right. Now, continuing this DIY science project, I'm gonna pull these elastics off nice and slow because you don't want all that venom squirting on your face like the Ricky. Oh, let me peel that back piece off. There we go. I'll wipe that off. Now that it's open, now we're gonna take my own blood. First, we're gonna shake it up a little bit. Boom, now just a little bit. If you guys look nice and slow. Mix it around. You guys see it's nice and red, it's clear. There's nothing coagulating already. You mix that stuff up and it becomes like jello. You give it a couple of seconds, and just like any bite, once it hits your veins, your blood turns into jello and it can't pass through. And you go into cardiac arrest and your nervous system drops down, and your heart stops, and so on and so forth. Neurotoxic venom just liquefies you. You know, and um, you start bleeding out of all holes, your fingernails, your, no your nose bleeds out of your ears, your teeth, your gums. <laughs> it's just not fun at all. Um, the cool thing about these snakes is I've learned in that from, they're all the way up in Pakistan, all the way down Sri Lanka, and sometimes their venom varies from hemotoxic to neurotoxic. I'm pretty sure even somehow cytotoxic, who knows? Uh, science is interesting. And uh, we're out here in our, the backyard of India in the foreground of an old temple and uh, we're milking snakes. <laughs> Check it out. All right, so you guys now see, after a couple more minutes of this venom sitting in your blood, it's now basically thinned it out. Now, take it back to what I said. You're bleeding all your cuticles, your nails, your eyes, your nose, your ears. Every, every hole in your body you're gonna bleed out of because it just literally liquefies you. Now, the blood is a whole different color. It's just not the same at all. You basically just bleed out. You get internal bleeding, external bleeding, and uh, you just basically suffocate and drown your own blood inside your own body. That is Cobra Venom 101. All right, so this is what the Russell's Viper Venom does to human blood. While we were milking that snake, its second fang, which isn't even its dominant fang, it's its, it's its secondary fang, which is ready to be rolled out when its dominant fang falls out and this will take place, come out into milking, which is common, they shed fangs all the time. But you can see the size of that fang and that's not even the big one, that's the secondary fang waiting for the big one to fall out. This, look at that, it is like turned it like a rock. It is actually like rock solid. 
So that is what happens to you when you get smashed. These things literally just rot, melt your flesh. Like you see pictures, like I, I know a dude personally who got bitten and his finger literally just melted off and he had access to pretty good first aid and that. So it's, yeah, it's, there's no, no, uh, no wonder why these things, you know, are the largest, the most dangerous snake in the world because when they're just rotting off massive pieces of your flesh and you're out here in these third world countries that have access to pretty well no healthcare, then you basically you're just dying of infection. You got gangrene, you got all that shit happening, just rotting flesh. So there you go. Something different. Little home fucking DIY project. What do you got, Ricky Mac? Mate, we got some jars of snakes. This doesn't seem like the most ethical way or the most uh, the way that you know the way that I do it in Australia or the way that people do it in America, but we are literally in the middle of India, shit is different here. You use what you got. These guys literally catch and relocate hundreds of snakes every week. Uh, Afsa was saying yesterday, he, just in this one spot alone, he reckons he's released 36,000 snakes or 3,600 snakes. What one was it? 36,000. It was, hey. Over 32 years. A little over a thousand snakes a year. So we'll start off with the Russell's Viper. Absolutely insane snake. We got some nice, just all this is all rocky hills, which is good habitat for them. And this is just a nice patch of dense greenery. So he's just during the day, he's got somewhere, somewhere shady and cool to chill out. And then he can go and find himself through the night. He's just heading off over into that leaf litter. No good, mate. Righto, this is the last one. The last cobra, we just released about 50 of these. This is from a week. Enough so I was saying, in the last 32 years, he's released 36,000 snakes in this area. So, just, yeah, that, that says enough. Not a happy camper, but it's hot. I'm gonna make sure he goes back off. Oh my God. Just get in that shade. There we go. Another couple snakes released. Little DIY project, how good. Righto, check this little fella out. This is a Bengal monitor, Varanus bengalensis. And um, anyone that knows me knows how much I love my Varanids or Goanna's monitor lizards. So I just thought I'd do a video for this, mainly just for my own self. But I've, only, I've seen one of these in the wild before in Singapore, but didn't even get close to it. So yeah, it's just really cool to see it's got like this pattern on its tail. Like the patch is just like a lace monitor at home. He's got like nearly a keeled tail, real nice yellow throat with spots on it and like a real like, I don't know, real bulky nasal region. These things get to about 1.6 meters in length, so they're massive. Like all monitors, they're not fussy. They're gonna eat anything in front of them. Snakes, lizards, carrion, birds, eggs. There's heaps of squirrels around here. They'd definitely be eating squirrels. And um, yeah, they like sort of jungly forest, rocky sort of habitats. Out here, there's not really much like proper jungles, real rocky climates. We uh, relocated this fella out of the village, so. Just found a nice little patch of good cover, good bushland. So we're just gonna let him go, but have a look at that. It's not, I don't see, I've seen pretty much every monitor in Australia. I've seen pretty much no monitors outside of Australia. So these are really cool. We'll let the little fella go. Have a look at him, mad little patterns. Still got heaps of growing to do. Hopefully he can live out his days out here. Here we 
You ready, little fella? Boom. There you go. Second exotic monitor species for me. First of many. I'm going to have to start ticking off the rest because I've already ticked off Australia. Rolling. All right, guys. This is for all the snake geeks out there. This guy is not dangerous. There's going to be no anxiety in this video. But it is very, very, very cool. Very unique. A species I don't even know about. This is your Indian sand boa. Now, I've seen another species earlier this trip, but this guy is sick. He eats mainly reptiles. He's always in the sand. Look at that. Look at that head. Like, I don't even know what that means, what it is. It's got that, uh, that sand burrowing like snout, like a skink almost. The scales on it are so different. It's like super soft. If you look, his head and his tail look so much alike. Now, I don't know how true it is, but the Indian folklore is half the year they move one way, the other half the year they move the other way. <laughs> I don't know, but man, look at this, man. And it's big. I've never seen a sand boa. I mean, a sand python this big. Sand boa, sand python, I don't know. I'm so confused when they brought this snake to the house last night. It's awesome. I love it. He's got this little derpy face. Look at that little snoot he got. I love it, man. Your red Indian sand python, sand boa, Kenyan sand boa, rubber ball. Oh, like I don't, it just has so many different characteristics. I just don't know. Uh, something to look up. If you guys know about this species, comment down below. School me, educate me. Um, we're all here to learn together. So sick. Let's guy go off into the shade. Off where he belongs. Look at him go. A little leaf litter down there. So hopefully he'll catch a skink or something. He might just burrow right now. Who knows? But that thing is sick. Again, if you guys are snake geeks, you guys know about rubber boas and Kenyan sand boas and rosy boas. This guy looks just like it, but it's like Indian sand python. It's sand boa. Sand boa. <laughs> <laughs> I don't fucking know. So another quick release of a house call. We got this young Indian rock python, AKA your tiger python. Look at this guy. Okay, your Sri Lankan python. That little peachy head is the cutest thing I've ever seen. Now, living in Florida, we always see Burmese pythons. Uh, I've been out in Africa, I've seen the African rock pythons. But man, look at this guy, man. It is sick. It's nice and light colored. It's almost like a caramel, you know, between the blotching on the top and that pink head. That peachy head. It's just, it just gets me every time. I've seen them online, but to see them up close, we, I let go a big one. Not too far away, probably like a half a mile down the road. But to see another small guy, I can release him. I love him. These are one of your biggest constrictors out here. Uh, they're going to be eating just about everything. Bengal monitors, cats, dogs, monkeys, langers, you name it. Whatever they can constrict and eat it, they're going to do it. But uh, these guys uh, outside of the Burmese pythons living in like wetlands and high jungly areas, this guy's going to live next to rocks and come, you know, kind of dry areas. So if you guys look behind, we're going to let him go and wish him well. Good luck, bud. Holes over there, I'm sure there's some like empty termite mounds and stuff. Nice little tree section in there. And he'll be off his way. Look at him go, man. Oh, that makes me happy. See you later, dude. There's not many uh, greater joys in my life than uh, seeing the captive snake or a rescue snake and then setting them free, giving them a second chance. Ready? Righto, this is the last relocation we've got. We're about to head to the airport. This is a checkered keelback. This thing is massive. We have keelbacks in Australia. Still a harmless colubrid like this, but they do not get this big. This thing is massive and it's a fucking savage too. Have a look at the size of that. They're like a water snake. This thing is wild. There are water snakes. They like to live like, like our keelbacks back in Australia. <laughs> Near water, swampy conditions, feeding on frogs, fish, maybe other snakes. I'm sure they'd be eating Indian toads, that sort of thing. When we caught him, he was going, he was going to town, but he's actually calmed down a fair bit now. I was expecting to be copping some bites, but we're really, we're really not. 
Crazy, big, thick Colby bread. These guys are harmless. I don't know too much about them, to be honest. This is out of my expertise, but harmless Colby bread. Check your keel back. Let's let him go and let's get to the airport. These things are at home in the water. Look at that. Gone. You got there, Ricky? I'm not sure, mate. Not sure. Hey. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, brother. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, brother. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you, brother. Ah, yes. About to crash into some, oh, crash into some people. <laughs> sorry, mate. Sorry, I wasn't looking where I was going. I had a bit on, you know. But we're on our way to fucking Bali, cunt. Mr. Worldwide, bald head. Fucking nothing else to say, mate. That's it. That's it. We're fucking signing out. Ready to sign back in. Let's go. The boys came, saw, and conquered India. We are out. Until next time, we love you guys. Like, subscribe, follow Ricky Mac on Instagram, on YouTube, Snapchat, Twitter, TikTok, Facebook, all the shit. Yeah, Mr. Very McKenzie. Different, very different outros. <laughs> I love you guys. Peace.